Hello from the Bees Knees. We're back again, and today we have a coffee pour over. All the stuff you see here is gonna be included in a kit if you like a to-go kit. If not, maybe you just wanna watch and see how we do it. Stay tuned. So here we go. I'm rolling out my clay. It's sticking to my roller, so I'm going to take one of the plastic sheets that you get in the kit and just cover it so it's not sticking. My clay's a little wet. I'm rolling from the center out all the time. Don't go over the edge. If you go over the edge, you're thinning it out. And we don't want that to happen. You want it to be the same thickness as much as possible. And I want this to be a little bit bigger than the circle, which that looks good. It's a good measurement for me. I'm gonna see how thick my clay is. And that's perfect. It's lined right up. So now I'm ready to do a pattern. And this pattern comes in your kit. If you have stamps, you can use some stamps to make it look however you want. You can use uh, letters, letter stamps, maybe do some monograms, whatever you like, your choice. I'm gonna do leaves. Let's roll that in. Pull it up. I have a little part in there. I'm just gonna pull it out with my needle tool. I'm gonna to take my pattern and the pattern is the size of the wood form. I'm gonna take this out and I'm cutting it larger than that because you wanna accommodate the sides. You have two tools. You can use a needle tool or a roller. Rolling cutter, that's what I'm gonna use. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna trim it later, but it has to be bigger than this circle. In this pattern, we also have a hole cut directly in the center for you so that you can take it and make a hole for the bottom of your dish. We need a drainage hole that goes all the way through. So I'm just gonna take that, make a hole, take the pattern off and just make the hole a little bit bigger. Can you see how my cap is still on my needle tool. It's the exact size I need to put in there and just kind of move it around so I have a nice hole in my clay, like that. Taking the wood form, and I'm going to put it upside down. We do have a video making a dish similar to this, if you want to watch that one for more information. This one will be specifically for pour over coffee because of the hole and some of the extra things we're going to do to it. I'm just bringing the clay to the wood, forming it, and I'm going to compress it. I want my clay compressed. It brings all the molecules in line. I'm not doing it super hard. And do that around the edge with my fingers. I'm gonna take my sponge and just smooth it out a little bit. Get all the marks out of it so it's nice and smooth. Clean the hole out a little bit. Next, I'm going to pick it up, the whole thing, the, the wood mold, the wood form, and the clay, and I have a paper cup here. The paper cup is going to hold it up while I trim the edge. I'm just pushing it down so the clay is covering the whole form. I'm gonna take the stick, find the edge, and just trim it off. I can turn it around in a circle so I'm comfortable getting a nice straight edge on that. On the bottom, I wanna make a ring it's a foot that we're putting on the bottom. And we're doing that so that when you put your pour over on top of your mug, it's not going to move around. It can't move off the top. I'm using a special tool that will be in your kit. 
It's a corn cob holder. And it is bent a little bit just to give you the right angle when you cut out the foot. And what do I need, mean by foot? For those of you that haven't done one of these before, it's just a piece that's going to go around the bottom. I'm bringing it in pretty close because um, I want it to be able to fit quite a few different size mugs. So I'm just making sure it's going to fit. And looks like a good size for mugs. Then I'm going to take my needle tool and cut it at an angle like this. Take the extra piece out from underneath and I'm going to put them together. Now my clay is real wet so I don't need a lot of scoring and slipping because it's so wet. Putting that on there, and I'm going to blend the seam together. So you can't tell it's there anymore. Blending is just the way it sounds, just bringing the pieces together and blending it in there. I'm going to press it down so it makes a good contact. And then I'm going to take the bottom of the tool that looks like a knife, and I'm going to come in and clean up. And as I'm cleaning up, some of the clay from the sides is going down into the gaps and filling it in. So sealing that up. And I'm also going to do that around the outside. Now, remember this is handmade. You're not making it on a wheel. So it's, it's not going to be perfect. That's okay. That's the beauty of this one. Going all the way around, just making sure it's nice and sealed. I'm just going to take my finger and some water and make sure it's nice and wet still. There we go. And get it as round as possible. The next thing I'm going to do is make an even smaller ring inside. I want the coffee to come out directly from this area so when I connect it, it is, it's pouring down. And also, when I take this off the form and I place the cone on top of it, it's going to give it some support so it doesn't sag in the middle. So take another piece from the cutting that I did. Make a small one right in the middle here. Let's wrap it around. Cut it at an angle again. And it's going right around the hole, this tag. Okay. So do the same thing I did on the other one. I'm going to score these ends just to blend them. Add a little water. And then clean up the edges. Cleaning up the edges with my knife. Pressing it down. I want to compress it a little bit. There we go. It's cleaning it up. All right. So now the next thing, because um, you're going to put these two together, is to let it dry to leather hardness. And then when we come back, we're going to pop the wood mold out from underneath and move on to our cone. I have the plate, the little dish that has been, um, has the double ring. It's dried a little bit and now it's ready to pop the form out. It should pop out that easily. If it doesn't, it's not dry enough. You can hit it with the hair dryer. And if you'd like to look at our other videos, on how to make the dish will give you more information, some, some different tips. You do want to clean up the edges. We're going to do that later. Right now, we're, we're just going to set this aside and let it dry as we're working on the funnel part of our pour over. OK, grab that other piece of clay that we have. We're going to roll it out the same. This time, we're going to make it fit the other pattern in your kit, like this. And 
it looks pretty wet. So I'm going to do the same thing we did last time and use the plastic over the top. Uh, I like to use pretty wet clay just because you don't have a lot of scoring and slipping in this situation. Um, but it does make it a bit of a pain to, to try to uh, roll it out and it sticks all over the roller, so we don't want that. Again, I'm going from the middle out and I'm hoping to have this fit. So you can see I need a little longer from corner to corner. So that's how I'm gonna work it right now. Starting in the center and rolling it out. We really want to move that clay around. You know, keep the same thickness. Don't roll over your edges. There we go. I'm just going to smooth it out now. There's some things that I don't show you on camera because um, it takes longer and it might have been in some of our other videos, but compressing your clay is always important to do. And you can see that I'm pressing down on the clay. It's aligning the molecules. It's always important. Now we're going to do the pattern. We want a matching pattern on this one, I think. So I'm just going to set my piece up so I can roll it in and get all the points of my pattern. And put a few more down here. That's the beauty of this pattern. You can take up and put down and overlap. Turns out pretty nice. My pattern. I do have two thickness clay, just like we did on the plate. So they're both the even thickness. And again, I'm gonna take my cutter. This time I'm gonna go right at the line of the pattern. There we go. And then we're going to grab the funnel that already has the pattern now wrapped around it. You're going to take the pattern that you used to cut and wrap it around your cone. Wrap it around your cone and tape it just like you see here. Now I did take some uh, cuts and make with some scissors and make some snips just so that it will fit up against the cone. Now we're going to do the same thing with the clay. We're going to take our knife and just make some, a few little cuts along the top and then see how it lays against the cone. So it's the same as your pattern would have been goes right up against there and I am going to overlap this. I'm going to score it and put some water. Now we want to make sure this doesn't leak because you're going to have fluid in it. Overlap it and press that down to make a good seal. Okay, so we have this now uh, seam nice and tight. We don't want anything leaking out. And if you want a design factor, I like to take my, um, my needle tool with the cap on again and just come in and I'm just pressing a design up the side. It makes it a little more secure and it puts a little detail, a little 
with kind of like a handmade detail on it. And then clean it up, just using my fingers and making sure that's nice and sealed along there, just like that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What we're going to do next is cut this off. I'm going to use my tongue depressor and come in here and cut this off. I'm holding my hand at the same level, hoping to get it even all the way around. Well, we'll fix it up later, but as even as you can get it. Okay, now I'm going to take this off. I'm taking the paper out of the inside. See how I'm supporting it with my hand? I'm going to take this and put it right back on my cone because I am going to put this on my cone again. But for now, I want to take my knife and I'm going to make some score marks inside here so that it makes the coffee drip down. And this will make it so that your filter is not sticking to the side. All the time I'm supporting it, you can put as many of these in as you want. And then I'm going to put it back on the cone and I'm going to let it dry. Okay. So I have it right back on where I had it before. Making sure that very bottom is tight next to the cone and it, that's going to dry for a while. We'll let this dry. We'll take it off and I'll show you how to connect the two together when we get back. What we have now is our cone and the small little dish. We're going to put these two together and before we do that, I'd like to make sure everything's cleaned up. I'm not gonna to worry too much about this part. You're all probably like, oh, it looks terrible. But we're going to, the way we connect them is going to put it together and you're not gonna see that. So I'm gonna take this off the cone. You can see how dry it is now, it's not moving. Remember the last time we were, um, I had it in my hand, I had to support it a lot, but now it's, it's leather hard and it's easy to handle. So we're gonna get this guy out of our way. And we're gonna clean up the edges. Um, to do that, you can take a screen, it should be in your kit, and just kind of screen the edges to make it nice and smooth. And again, it's handmade, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Then after you do that, you're going to take a sponge and just get the edge. Clean that up. Go in and smooth out your scored lines that you put in for the direction of your coffee and to help your filter work correctly. And just smooth it out. You can double check your seam. This is where we overlap the seam here. You can see that. Just make sure that's nice and snug. Just like that. Okay, so we have the cone. And we have the dish. I'm going to move this form out of the way and see if we have any cleaning to do on this. A little bit. You can use your sponge. Now, if you're a little more of a perfectionist and you want it to be nice and uniform, you can use one of these cards. You just a uh, card like mine or a credit card and you just cut a notch out of it and um, you just take it and go around the edge like that and it'll give you a, a nice uniform edge if you like. It's another another layer of cleaning if, if you like that. Quite often I end up making more marks with it so I, I don't always use the card. Okay, the next thing I'm going to get all those little crumbles out. I'm 
I'm going to go in and just take the end of uh, the end of your brush or the um, one of these, go in there, and just make the hole nice and clean. Any scratch marks that you do. There we go. And then I'm going to clean my workspace. And we're going to make a coil. The coil is to put the two pieces together. So I'm taking the coil. It's pretty wet. I don't know if you want to make sure you can see this. Just make sure it's compressed pretty good as you're making your coil. You want it to be about this thick that you see here. And you want it to be pretty wet. And I'm going to take and do some scoring around, around the hole in the bottom of the dish. And then I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this around this so that we have all the funny areas covered up on it. Take your needle tool and cut your angle. Take both pieces off. Push them together. You want it to be pretty wet. And you are going to want to do your scoring because your dish is a little drier now, remember. So you're going to do your scoring and slip. See how my water made slip on this already? little water here. We want a nice tight seal. I'll turn it right side up and we're going to put the two together. Now I do want to make sure I'm lined up so you're going to look down through it and um, you can take your needle tool to make sure you go all the way down and smooth that out. And make sure that you're standing up straight. You want it to be both ways, front and back, side to side. There we go. Again, just take a look, quick look before you're finished to make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, you can take a brush and go down in there and smooth it out too. That should be your final and it's just it's hard to show you but I'm just going down into the hole and I am making sure it's nice and smooth and all joined together. And I'm going to go back in and make sure all my lines that I uh, drew all the scoring that I did up the side of the container, um, go right down into the hole. So it all leads, all those lines and tunnels, lead down into the hole to direct the, the coffee. And there we have it. Now that you have your pieces together, you're going to let it dry just for a short while. You want the coil to be leather hard, just like the rest of the pieces. Then gently bring it in. You want to wrap it, put it, place it in a bag or a box, bring it in. It's going to be fragile and fire it. If you have your own kiln, you're going to fire it to cone 04. If you bring it in to us, it's going to be two weeks. We're going to make sure it dries thoroughly and then it'll take another week to go through the kiln. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.